Welcome to News at 10 with me, Brendan LePaul. All vaccination-related programs and health strategies related to COVID-19 will from now on will only be handled by the Ministry of Health, MOH, through its newly appointed Minister, Kairi Jamaluddin. Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabi Yaakob said the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, now helmed by Datu Sri Dr. Atam Baba, will instead focus on research and development, R&D, to produce COVID-19 vaccines. Lepas ini hanya satu kementerian saja yang akan handle vaksin iaitu Kementerian Kesihatan. Ha, kalau dulu ada dua kementerian, Kementerian Kesihatan, Kementerian uh, Sains dan Teknologi, ada Jabatan Kuasa yang dipengusikan oleh dua menteri, ada KSU, dua-dua KSU terlibat, jadi agak sukar. Speaking during a media conference after witnessing the Para Predators Exercise Series 1-2021, the Premier said mostly will be focusing on producing its own vaccine. He explained that Malaysia should not entirely depend on foreign countries while noting Thailand as an example of an ASEAN country that has taken steps to produce its own vaccine. In a related matter, Datu Sri Ismail Sabri said he has informed the MOH through Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah that factories, especially those with many foreign workers, are able to set up their own vaccination centres, PPVs. The Premier explained that this is to prevent congestion like what had happened at the Bukit Jalil National Stadium, PPV. Yang yang mempunyai pekerja asing ini, mereka perlu menjadikan, jadikan kilang mereka sebagai tempat memberikan vaksin. Jadi pekerja asing ni tak payah nak keluar, nak pergi bergatur dekat stadium ke mana-mana. Ya. Kita takut melihatkan isu bekai isu yang berkaitan dengan stadium ke Jalil itu. He said the congestion drew concerns that those queuing for their vaccine shots could also get infected as images viral on social media showed physical distancing guidelines were not being complied with. The Prime Minister said he had also informed Tan Sri Dr. Nur Hisham to add more drive throughs PPVs as they are not costly to operate and also the fact that there is no close contact with others while queuing. Now, following an increase of infections recorded in Perlis, a new COVID-19 quarantine and treatment centre, PKRC, will be opened in the state next week. Now, the PKRC, which will be opened at the Institute of Teacher Education, Perlis campus, will have a capacity of 200 bits to provide comfortable and proper care for patients. Perlis COVID-19 Immunization Task Force CITF Chairman Azman Muhammad Yusuf said the PKRC will help sustain the two quarantine centres in the state. Mereka yang akan duduk di PKRC ini adalah kategori satu yang dikatakan tidak ada sintem dan sebagainya. Dan kebiasaannya mereka ini adalah daripada apa ni kata daripada sebelumnya kategori ketiga kemudian dia turun pada kategori kedua ataupun kategori satu. Jadi mereka ini akan letakkan di tempat-tempat PKRC tersebut. Azman added that the state CITF will also open a new vaccination centre in University Malaysia Perlis to increase the state's vaccination rate. To date, about 83.7% of Perlis adult population have received their first jab, while 64.1% of the same group have been fully inoculated, with daily vaccination figure reaching 3,500 to 4,500 doses every day. Morning and night market traders in Malacca will be allowed to operate once they have been fully vaccinated. Chief Minister Datu Sri Sulaiman Mat Ali said for this inoculation program, such as the retail industry vaccination, that targets to immunize retailers will be able to help expedite the market's reopening. Datu Sri Sulaiman also revealed that the state government has already prepared detailed SOP for the market's reopening but reiterated that it could be done only after the traders are fully immunized. Kita dah ada SOP yang telah dibenarkan sebenarnya tetapi uh, dalam mesyuarat uh, jatuhan so COVID-19 negeri kita ada uh, mencasarkan berapakah jumlah di kalangan mereka yang uh, peniaga ini yang telah mendapatkan uh, vaksinasi dan saya yakin uh, pasal pagi atau pasal malam ini akan juga diberikan uh, kebenaran nanti tetapi mestilah uh, mereka telah mendapat uh, vaksinasi penuh insyaAllah kita akan cuba sebaik mungkin 
speaking after visiting a vaccination centre in Aikoro, the chief minister said the local authorities have been instructed to open more PPVs to expedite the inoculation drive in the state. The Delta variant of COVID-19 has been identified as the dominant variant infecting the people in Srawa. Now, this is according to the Institute of Health and Community Medicine, IHCM, of University of Malaysia, Srawa, Unimas. Its director, Professor Dr. David Pereira, said as of 17 August, the institute had conducted genome sequencing on 220 positive cases with a total of 179 additional variants of concern, VOC, and variants of interest, VOI, being detected from them. Of these VOC, VOI, 178 were of the Delta variant, and one of the cases of the recently described Indonesian VOI detected in Bintulu. The overall Delta variant detection rate of 82% observed in this report represents an increase from the 73% reported on 17 August. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 last year, IHCM has been at the forefront of the fight against the pandemic in the state, tasked with testing samples and genome sequencing analysis to detect changes in the virus. Sending our best to the people in Srawa. Now, the single-dose COVID-19 vaccine produced by Consigno is proven to ease the vaccination process in Sabah, especially for those living in rural areas and islands of Sabah waters. Now, this is because the vaccine recipients do not have to travel twice to the PPV, thus reducing logistical problems. According to a medical officer from Tawau Health Clinic, Dr. Nur Shazra Najwa Zaini, the single-dose jabs also help ease the workload of health personnel as they no longer need to return to the same PPV for second-dose shots. Penduduk di pulau walaupun jauh daripada bandar dapat vaksin ya eh? sebab kita sekarang ni kita nak berusaha untuk mencapai imunisasi uh, kelompok ya eh? supaya kita nak mengelakkan daripada penularan yang lebih lah selepas ni. She was met during vaccination outreach program in Pulau Sabate, Tawau, Sabah. The program was also attended by Sabate Assemblyman Hassan Abdul Ghani Pengiran Ame, who revealed that another two PPVs were open in order to immunize about 800 local residents. He added that so far, 899 residents of Serudong, Laut Kalabakan, Sungai Pukol and Bagosong have been vaccinated with Hansino vaccine. The Health Ministry has recorded 22,597 new COVID-19 infections nationwide today, a slight increase from yesterday's 22,070 cases. Now, this brings the cumulative figure to over 1.68 million cases since the pandemic hit the country last year. In a series of tweets, Health Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said Selangor remains the state or territory with the highest number of cases at 5,814. Now this is followed by Sabah with 2,834 cases and Sarawak with 2,427 cases. The state or territory with the lowest number of cases is Labuan with 5 cases, followed by Putrajaya with 48 cases and Perlis with 98 cases. Recoveries from COVID-19 stands at 19,492 for today, bringing the total number of recoveries in Malaysia to over 1.4 million. The number of cases being treated in intensive care units for today is 986, of which 451 require breathing assistance. The ministry also recorded 252 fatalities from COVID-19 today, bringing the total number of deaths in the country to 15,802 cases. Meanwhile, the National COVID-19 Immunization Program recorded over 33.3 million doses of vaccine have been administered. Of this number, 19.1 million or 58.5% is the first dose, while 14.3 million or 43.8% is the second dose. Welcome back. Past Secretary General Datu Sri Takiyuddin Hassan does not consider his change of portfolio as a downgrade. Instead, he said the decision made by the newly minted Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob was to create a results oriented cabinet. The Kotabaru MP said he is confident that he will be able to carry out his duty as the Minister of Energy and Natural Resources efficiently, with the assistance from his deputy, Dato Ali Biju, as well as his ministerial personnel. Dan saya rasa uh, ini perkara biasa saja. Uh, tidak ada sebab-sebab tertentu lah. Bagi saya semua portfolio sama ada ada kementerian ke tak ada itu sama saja. Gantung kepada individu menteri itu sendiri juga. 
proofkan bahawa dia ni boleh melaksanakan kerjanya dengan baik itu adalah yang lebih penting lah. Dato Sri Taki Yudin added there is no need to address such issues but instead to put more focus on his duty to the country and its people. He said all the ministers in the cabinet had received instructions from the Prime Minister to achieve their key performance index KPI in the first 100 days. Bukit Aman's Commercial Crimes Investigation Department, CCID, together with its Singaporean counterpart, managed to bust a scam syndicate offering job opportunities on 26 August. Three local men aged between 21 to 27 years old were detained at a luxury condominium in Taman Desa Skudai, Johor Bahru, believed to be its operation centre. Bukit Aman's CCID Director Dato Muhammad Kamaruddin Maddin in a statement said police had filed reports from 164 victims and estimated the total losses so far to 2.4 million ringgit. In the raid, police seized two laptops, seven mobile phones, a tablet, 12 ATM cards, a wristwatch, two units of router and several documents pertaining to the case. Dato Muhammad Kamaruddin said the syndicate was related to 95 police reports filed by victims in Singapore with losses estimated around 690,000 Sing dollars. Investigations revealed that the syndicate had been active since June last year through Facebook and Instagram. The syndicate is believed to lure its victims by offering job opportunities with a commission of 200 to 300 ringgit per day. Now the case is currently being investigated under Section 420 of the Penal Code and Section 4 of Computer Crimes Act 1997 as well as the Prevention of Crime Act 1959 and Anti-Money Laundering and Anti-Terrorism Financing and Proceeds of Unlawful Activities Act 2001. Yang di Pertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Raya Turin Al Mustafa Bilasha and Raja Permaisuri Agong Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimunah Iskadaria have expressed their condolences to the family of Tun Ahmad Saji who passed away today. Their Majesty said they were saddened by his passing and hoped that his family would be patient and resolute in facing this situation. In a statement posted on Istana Negara's Facebook page, Their Majesties appreciated and praised Tun Ahmad Sarji's services, deeds and sacrifices to the country. Al Sultan Abdullah and Tunku Aziza regarded Tun Ahmad Sarji's passing as a huge loss to the country. The former Chief Secretary to the government, born on 16 September 1938 in Tapa, Pera, was highly regarded and respected as a public administration figure. He served as a top civil servant from 1990 to 1996, when the country was under the administration of fourth Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir. Muhammad. He was also the founder of the Institute of Islamic Understanding Malaysia, IKIM. Prime Minister Datu Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob meanwhile describes the late Tun Ahmad Saji as a patriot and a highly respected civil service administration figure whose deeds would be edged in the country's history. He said the demise of Tun Ahmad Saji, who was a patriot, is a big loss to the country. The Premier said the former KSN was synonymous with various efforts to improve the image and efficiency of the Public Service Administration and was committed to contribute ideas and expertise, including the education sector, despite being retired. As the Chairman of the Institute of Islamic Understanding Malaysia, IKIM, and the Islamic Affairs Committee of the Conference of Rulers, the late Tun Ahmad Saji played a very significant role in empowering Islamic teachings in the country. The body of Tun Ahmad Saji Abdul Hamid was laid to rest at the Raudatul Sakina Bukit Kiara Dua Muslim Cemetery at noon today. His body arrived at the cemetery at about 11.45 a.m. accompanied by several close family members. The late took his last breath at Chancellor Tuanku Mukheres Hospital in University Kabangsa in Malaysia on 1.40 a.m. after being admitted to the hospital on 7th August due to COVID-19 complications and other illness. 21 hours ago, four hours before the ICU, his breath was more difficult for him. His breath was more ICU. Earlier, the remains of Tun Ahmad Saji was brought to Saidina Umar al Katab Mosque in Bukit Damansara for prayers. Moving on to sports, Malaysia clinches first Paralympic gold. Stay with us.
Tahniah Bonnie Bunyau, pemenang pingat emas Sukan Paralimpik Tokyo 2020. Syabas daripada RTM. Congratulations indeed. Now the full story. National powerlifting champion Bonnie Bunya Agustin pulled off an amazing feat when he won the first gold medal for Malaysia on the fourth day of the Tokyo Paralympic Games today. What was more impressive was that the Sarakin, who was born in Sirian, also broke the Paralympics record of 227 kgs set by Rasul Mosin from Iraq in Rio 2016 when he lifted 228 kgs in his third attempt on the first day of the sport. However, Bonnie did not better his own world record of 230 kgs that he set at the 11th FASA Dubai Powerlifting World Cup in the United Arab Emirates (UAE) last June, when he failed to lift 231 kgs in his fourth attempt. Now, the silver medal was won by Egyptian athlete Mahmoud Atia, while the bronze went to Mickey Yule of Great Britain. The dwarf-sized Barney started brilliantly with the first lift of 217 kgs and continued to maintain an exceptional performance, lifting 225 kgs in the second attempt, before completing the third in style to break the Paralympics record. Barney's success in winning the first gold medal for the country's powerlifting camp. Also marked another milestone in Malaysia's participation in the prestigious games since the 1972 edition in Heidelberg, Germany. Malaysia's first medal in the Paralympic Games also came via powerlifting through P. Mariapan, who won bronze in the 1988 edition in Seoul, South Korea. Now in football, Johor Darul Takzim JDT FC guaranteed their eighth consecutive Super League Championship after downing Sri Pahang FC 3-0 at Stadium Sultan Ibrahim Iskandar Putri Johor last night. The Southern Tigers were clearly comfortable playing on their home turf as they dominated throughout the entire match. The hosts only needed seven minutes to open up the scoreboard with a strike by Bergson da Silva. Bergson continues to reinforce his reputation as a formidable force in the Super League with yet another goal in the 40th minute. The Brazilian then went on to score his third goal of the match just four minutes later, completing his hat trick just before the conclusion of the first half. After the break, both sides kept their guard up and no further goals were scored all the way up to full time for the result 3 0, with JDT securing the championship. Head coach Benjamin Mora said he was satisfied with the performance of his squad that night on top of becoming the 2021 Super League champions. Yes, of course, these players that were not here helping the team of Pahang uh, helps us to maybe have uh, more opportunities to, to play good football, to dominate the game, to play possession uh, as we like. I think that the decision is that we are angry. But from the side of the team, I am very happy with the players, the players, the players, and the president. Olympic Council of Malaysia OCM President Tan Sri Mohamad Norza Zakaria has returned unopposed for the 2021 to 2025 term after the nominations closed on Wednesday. The Badminton Association of Malaysia BAM President won the OCM presidency also unopposed in 2018, replacing Tan Sri Tunku Imran Tuanku Jaffa, who chose not to seek re-election after holding the post since 1998. Meanwhile, Football Association of Malaysia FEM President Dato Hamidin Mohamed Amin, a newcomer, also won the deputy president's seat unopposed. OCM Independent Election Panel head returning officer Dato Sri Jahaberdin Mohamed Yunus confirmed that two more incumbents will also return unopposed, namely Moira Tan as Assistant Secretary General and Dato Ahmad Faisal Ahmad Tajuddin as Treasurer. Saya ambil uh, mandat dan kepercayaan ini sebagai satu tanggungjawab dan amanah kerana hari ini uh, kita menghadapi uh, cabaran yang begitu hebat terutamanya dalam kita menghadapi pandemik COVID yang telah menyebabkan uh, sukan kita selama lebih dua, dua, dua tahun ini berada dalam keadaan terumbang ambing. Saya yakin bahawa Uh, kepercayaan yang diberi oleh 
satu persatuan sukan ini menunjukkan mereka mahu satu proses kesinambungan ataupun continuity dalam leadership OCM untuk terus kita membawa sukan keluar daripada kemelut pandemik ini. That concludes this evening news at 10 in our top story, Health Ministry to handle vaccinations while mostly to focus on vaccine research and development. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Till then, I'm Brendan Nepal. Stay tuned to Solaran Berita RTM and have a pleasant evening.